Hi there, Bear Kessels here. Um, I want to demo a uh, problem which I found in uh, Image Cache. Um, Image Cache Drupal 7 has always been there in Image Cache in Core, Drupal, uh, sorry, Drupal 6, Image Cache in Contrib, Drupal 7, Image Cache in Core. Um, the problem is mostly a uh, DDoS vector. It's not so much a vulnerability, it's not a security hole per se but it's kind of a big problem so i have a drupal 7 to 12 installed one article having one image um, basically the article has one added field i manually added that um, an image field this image is displayed as medium size on the teaser and it's displayed large style on the full node i did change the large image style, uh, image cache style um, to be 960 by 800 and allow upscaling to demo the effect a little bit better. Okay, one image, here it is. Uh, I created some demonstration code, proof of concept code. What this does, it, a, it detects whether or not your site is vulnerable uh, for this. Basically any site with uh, these kind of URLs is vulnerable because these kind of sites indicate that you have uh, image cache installed. Pretty easy fingerprinting, this could be done much easier. Uh, the actual detection that I did uh, previously is with a Blind Elephant, a Python environment. But my Python is not that good that I could hook into that so I wrote a very ugly little Ruby script. Okay, the problem lies in the following. We have um, images on disk. Let me show you what we have. There we have. We have an image on disk in our files directory on the server. We have an image under field image news. This was uploaded by me, an editor. It's a two megabyte image, approximately. It's JPEG. Look into the disk system. We see that we have one image named news.jpg um, and the total amount of disk space used by uploads is 2 megabyte. Well, it's one image being 2 megabyte. So this image is called through image cache in Drupal after which a new file is generated. This new file is then written to disk so that a future call it does not need to be regenerated again. Right now here uh, this URL indicates that it's going to be passed through the large image cache. So if we have the style here, the large, and only one effect effect is applied to that by default, uh, which is it's scaled. You can um, apply a lot of other effects, but that's only going to cause more CPU overload because all the effects have to be done. You can actually download a lot of. Uh, additional effects like uh, watermarking, uh, 3D effects, um, placing text on images, etc. Um, so, right now, there we are. Right now, every image um, being on your image on your file system can is uh, can be called through image cache, and a uh, derivative will be generated from that which is then written to disk, which can then be called through image cache, after which image cache will create a derivative of the derivative, etc, 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 nesting deeper and deeper and deeper. Just by applying um, more paths to the existing URL of the image, it will generate new ones and new ones. Uh, another part of the problem is that anything that's treated as an image will be passed through this image style. So, um, for example, image cache on Ubuntu um, by default um, allows PNGs, sorry, PDFs to be uh, treated as images. You can create a thumbnail from a PDF. Not that easy, but it is possible. Um, so by default, when you have a PDF here, this image style will try to treat the PDF as if it's going to create a large image of that or if you have a thumbnail if you put a thumbnail here it'll try to create a thumbnail version of that PDF so it'll actually eat up the PDF um, try start parsing it very often it'll fail but not always but it depends a little bit on um, what libraries uh, you have installed with image cache 
Um, I've managed it a couple of times on a couple of servers to actually pass large PDFs, 60, uh, 70 megabyte PDFs through the image cache and have it generate new files, um, which cause about uh, 15 to 20 minutes of high CPU. Right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna nest 50 deep and I'm gonna generate, uh, for all the images, I'm gonna generate um, different versions of them. Uh, my site uses only the medium and the large, but I'm gonna Drupal comes by default with the thumbnails, so I'm going to generate the thumbnails anyway because Drupal allows me to, to generate them even though they are not used on the website. I'm going to run through that and I'm going to show you uh, what happens right then. So, there we are. We're generating right now. If we look at the CPU, we can see that the CPU is pretty high. I'm going to go back here to the code and show you that this is um, serial so we're waiting, so it's um, synchronous, not asynchronous, so we're actually waiting after this call until this call is finished, until we start with the next call. But I could just as easily fire 100 calls simultaneously uh, asynchronized. I'm not doing that right now because then I wouldn't be able to record my desktop. Uh, CPU is pretty high already, one thread in, in Apache, um, and we're running through it. And there we are. It took about 42 seconds to do all this and to call 150 HTTP calls, which is pretty um, low amount. We only did a head call, so we didn't even pull in the old hit, the old the image. We just called the head, so we need hardly need any bandwidth on our site. And the server has been f uh, about 42 seconds has been. A near 100% CPU and if we're gonna look at what happened on the file system we can see that generated 30 megabytes of files 151 additional files have been generated this is pretty bad this um, uh, if you do this distributed or if you do even do this asynchronous from one simple laptop you can pull down about every Drupal site which is not on a very large site uh, proxies won't help a lot because um, only if you have your proxy configured in such a way that image cache won't work um, this problem won't occur but otherwise it will occur and because uh, the proxy will leave, lead through uh, these kind of image URLs we can actually look at this image URL this is kind of a URL of such a um, dynamically generated image there it is this is an image of an image of an image of an image etc etc so this is just a very large URL. To look at the URL, you can see that the URL goes back and back and back and back. Let me see. There we are there. So it just nested, nested, nested all the styles. This actually exists on the file system. Styles. What was it? Large public styles. Large public styles large etc etc we can go deeper and deeper and deeper into a file system like this problematic more problematic I'd say is the CPU usage um, another thing which I do right now is I um, I don't combine these styles but if in the URL there we are if in the URL I'm using here large and here large but I could apply different styles on this so I can start combining all these kind of styles which allows me to infinite almost infinite uh, at least exponentially um, create different URLs to generate new images so the moment an image has been generated then Apache will just send it back which is pretty um, low CPU intensive on your website but the moment a new image has to be created by combining these things uh, by combining these image styles uh, you can just generate any uh, amount of files on the file system so I could just have this keep on going for for hours if I'd like to so how to solve that I'm not really sure I'd say that the whole concept of on-the-fly generation is basically flawed and broken and shouldn't have been in there in the first place but that's um, hindsight um, so the whole image cache idea is actually broken. You shouldn't 
uh, generate images on request you should generate them on submit so at the moment the node has been created you generate the derivatives and that's it then you know exactly what you can scale for and you have um, the CPU on the moment that you know you're gonna have it not at some moment that people are requesting it and um, you can generate a few and then on request you can just send it 404 if an image doesn't exist instead of creating it if it doesn't exist another thing right now to solve this um, because that would mean a completely different um, style which in Drupal 7 won't help, won't be, be possible anymore is to create some kind of blacklist uh, and or whitelist um, uh, regular expression so then everyone has to define a regular expression or a list or probably Drupal can predefine regular expressions of files which are allowed to be passed through the um, I'm sorry through the uh, image styles and everything which doesn't fit that regular expression will be om omitted and will just give back 404 um, this is actually already possible in um, the .hdxs or the Apache configuration, but it's not easy because these uh, the regular expressions are pretty hard to write, to write, to write correctly. Um, yeah. So, summarizing, because you can do a head call, and at that moment Apache will generate it. This is Ubuntu. I'm really sure 11.04. Yeah, I am sure 11.04. Um, just the vanilla Apache installed there did nothing very much to configure it. I'd say about 90% of the, the, the websites on Drupal out there, uh, being PHP and Apache, will allow a head request to just generate the file. So I don't need bandwidth on my side, I don't need to wait for the request to come back, I just can fire um, thousands of these requests after each other. Um, combine the styles, um, create hierarchical URLs and then fill up anyone's file system and club or anyone's CPU. Thank you.